when did you like start realizing, man, this is like my passion? Like, just I would love to know more about. Like, <clears throat> well, I was in um, from. I was in seventh grade, and um, my teacher was like, you know, me getting left back in the fourth grade with a first grade reading level, having, you know, some issues with my academics because I had dyslexia, undiagnosed dyslexia. Mm-hmm. Um, I struggled and struggled and struggled, and I definitely struggled with confidence until the seventh grade when my professor told my mother, he's pretty damn smart. His issue is that he drifts. If he's bored and he's disinterested, he doesn't hear anything you're saying. It goes in one ear and out the other. He doesn't even have recall. But if he's passionate about it, she said, he said, you've got somebody special on your hands because he's pretty brilliant. And so I started thinking about what was I passionate about? And sports was it because of the sports that I used to watch with my dad. And so because of that, um, it just took off from there. And that's where my passion started to grow because it wasn't just about sports. It built my confidence about life. The fact that I could watch and have the recall that I have and to read and to comprehend what was going on in the sports world. I now recognize that I wasn't as dumb as I thought that I was. And as a result, my confidence built from there. So instead of just limiting myself to sports, I would read news, current events, politics, all of this other stuff. You're interested. And I would really, I would really expand my interest and my intellect grew. And as my intellect grew, obviously so did my confidence. And that's where it really, really came from. And so, but I also remember that when I'm not that passionate about something, I drift. And so because of that, that made me more cognizant and mindful of being around people and embracing subject matter that interests me. So I'm, you know, the best thing, that, the best way that I can explain it to you is that when I knew <clears throat> that my, what do you call it? A disability, malady, whatever, whatever way you want to call it. When I realized that it worked to my advantage was when I became a beat writer covering the NBA. Because 20,000, 19 to 20,000 people would be in attendance. And I swear to y'all, when deadline approached and it was time to get it done, to get my article in on time, I literally didn't hear anything. I literally would be in an arena and it's 19,000 people in there and I did not hear a word. I could, I just don't know how to explain it. And that's mm-hmm. not always a good thing. You know what I'm saying? You got a lady, you know, you, you it would be wise for you to listen. If you're bored, you know, yeah. Wise for you shit, to listen. Yeah. <laughs> I know how to tune people out. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting there, you know. I yeah. mean, it gets to the point where you have people, family, friends, loved ones, whatever. Literally, if a sporting event is on, they'll have to walk in front of the TV <laughs> to block it. So I can hear because I don't hear a damn word this thing. Like, look, I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, what, and, and, and especially, you know, my girl be like, what did I say? I'm like, shit. Huh? <laughs> you know, so I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's stuff like that. So, so, you know, you definitely got that going on that. But that has always, always, always been me. 